Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. In this episode, I will explain what C++ Insights is and give you a little introduction in where you can find it and how you can easily use it. So today's topic is about a C++11 feature and this is a new way of using using. But before we get to that, let's look at the motivating example. I have a base class here that has a constructor taking an integer and a perfectly defaulted destructor which is virtual as it should be in a base class because here then I have a virtual member function called state which in my case simply returns always true but I can override it and base here has of course a member called m value and then my derived class here it derives from base of course here in line number 18 it overrides the method state and sets a different default. In that case, false. So essentially what derived does is simply slightly modifying base. And this is a pattern we have often. I do have it in C++ Insights. If you look at GitHub, at the sources in codegenerator.h, there is the base class codegenerator, which does most of the heavy lifting and is usually used, but there are a couple of specializations which slightly change the defaults and most of the time this is all what they are doing. So this works, of course. Um, my point here is, or what I'm struggling with, are these three lines of code. I have to write them to make derived be able to be constructed from an integer, in my case 41. Okay, so if I transform this just to check, all right, it compiles them. So far there, there's nothing really going on that we like to investigate today. But these three lines of code, this is a repetition. It's annoying to write code. It's not really necessary. And imagine now you have more than one construct on the base class and you want to be able to create derived for all these various constructors. This is the case for code generator in C++ Insights. I have four or five constructors in there and that's a realistic scenario. And then we have to repeat all these constructors in all the derived classes simply to alter virtual member functions. And this is where the C++11 feature using comes in. So we can now say using base colon colon base. And by that we're telling the compiler that it should pull in all the constructors in the base class. So if I do the transformation then we can see two things. First of all, it compiles without me providing the constructor in derived. And just for safety, so let's check, okay, it doesn't compile without that. Here now it compiles. And if we now take a look at derived, then we can see what the compiler does for us is it creates this constructor we've created before and simply forwards its value to the base class. Okay, so this is the code we previously had to write, but now the compiler does this with a single line of code. So would I have more than one constructor? Let's simply say I have another one, which for example, takes a double and internally for now it doesn't anything. And we are creating a second object D2 and it gets the value 41.0. If I now transform this again, then we see we have a constructor taking an integer and another one taking a double, both forwarding to the constructors in the base class. There's one thing more because the compiler here is very precise. It makes this created constructor no except false, so not no except. Would, for example, one of my constructors be no except and the other would still be no except? then the compiler would do the correct thing. So this constructor now is marked as no except and that one isn't. So the compiler is precise here and it helps us dropping 
a good amount of useless code. I'm, I know it's not useless because we need it, but it's a burden to write it. And that way it's way simpler, way easier. So whenever you stumble over a situation like this, consider using using to pull in all the constructors from the base class. There is one more thing adjacent to one of my last episodes. Now say I have in derived another data member, let's call it mData. And we want to do this, this u thing. thing. If I transform this code now, and we look at the resulting transformation, then we can see here's my data member. That's great. But that's it. In my constructors here, mData is not set. Of course, to which value? I'm, I'm not passing anything to this data member. And that's fine. I have exactly this scenario in C++ Insights, as I said, with code generator.h. Sometimes these derived classes keep additional state and that can be default initialized. And this is where in-class member initializers, if you remember this episode, come in very handy because I can now set the default and if we scroll down now, then we can see that this constructors created by the compiler now default initialize my member mData. This is something you have to watch out for if you do this using thing, like on the left in line number 15, all the data members of this derived class are uninitialized unless we provide our defaults with in-class member initializers. So I hope this gives you an insight about how you can drop a few lines of code in class hierarchies like that and make it more readable and more maintainable or easily maintainable. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye bye.